everyone. This is a really easy project that you can do all year round, not just for the holiday time. It's custom stamps and custom wrapping paper. I love this craft. It's so easy and there's a million options and it's very creative. And all it takes is different large sheets of colored paper. You are welcome to use white. That's a very easy color to use. I also buy these big bulk rolls of craft paper and many craft stores have large rolls of colored paper that you can cut pieces off. So I have green and black and blue and red. And then you need some pre-cut pieces of cardboard and you'll see I love going to the post office to get some free supplies. I just took a priority mailbox, cut it up into squares that are maybe three inches by three inches and that will serve as the background to the stamps. And then you need foam sheets and again the color doesn't make a difference because we're going to be putting them onto stamp pads and you need glue dots. I use these to attach the stamps to the cardboard. Obviously scissors to cut out the shapes and as you can see here I've got a heart and a star and this was made around the holiday time so this is supposed to be like a Christmas tree and let's see I even made well I tried to make fun snowflake shapes but I'm not sure if it succeeded and then you just need some ink pads. So let me show you how to make this. Let's get started. Let's begin. So in my intro, I did not mention that you are welcome to take a Sharpie or a light pencil to outline the shape that you want to cut out on your foam sheet. You can also do this freehand since most of the designs should be relatively simple and actually not too detailed because it can be hard when working with a stamp pad to pick up all the tiny details. So cut out the foam form and then using one of those sheets of pre-cut cardboard, pick up the Zot dots, those fun little glue dots, and put at least four or five around the edge of your foam stamp. And be sure if you're doing something like a star where you have points that you put a glue dot on every corner. So push down firmly onto the cardboard back because you don't want it to lift off when you are stamping it. And now pick the color that you're going to use for your wrapping paper. I love black because it produces a really gorgeous contrast. And I'm using a small stamp pad here, so what I'm actually doing is kind of, I'm almost painting with it onto the foam pad as a way to get the ink over the entire surface. Obviously, if you have a larger stamp pad, you won't have to make a pass over it so many times. Figure out where you want to place your design, push down firmly, and try not to jiggle it so it leaves a blur. And then, voila! You have your first stamp. And that looks kind of fun actually. It looks a little bit like a cloud maybe, or a flower. I'm going to repeat it here. And again, this is where you have total creative freedom in creating whatever pattern or design you want. It could be an organized pattern or random. I'm going to use my other star stamp and add some designs to this. And also don't forget you could add Sharpie afterwards and go into the various stamps and add details to make it more interesting. It's really up to you how you want to do this. And before you know it, you're going to have a gorgeous sheet of custom handmade wrapping paper. Enjoy!
So why murals in Lake City? Well, uh, my name is Mark Mendez and I've lived in Lake City for 42 years, my whole life. Um, just turned 42 on July 3rd. And um, I really care about my neighborhood and I'm passionate about trying to make it the best neighborhood that I can. So I had the chance to um, start the Lake City Mural Project. So you see here, it's one of our, I think one of my favorite murals here in, in the Lake City Murals Project. And um, now we have 50 murals in the neighborhood uh, painted by over 100 different teenagers and youth in the neighborhood, uh, 12 different artists. And uh, the idea is to empower uh, local youth and empower local artists, beautify the neighborhood, and deter um, unwanted graffiti. Welcome to Lake City, one of the most diverse and unique neighborhoods in Seattle, with over 30 different languages spoken. I created the Lake City Murals program in 2016 to empower underserved youth with leadership skills and art skills. Let the hands represent community. Eight hands on this side, eight hands on the other side. It's called a so, salmon welcoming. Salmon welcoming. And who's the artist who did this one? Catherine Arquette Turpin. She is a Duwamish Mokoshi artist. And this is right in the heart of Lake City, right? Right where it belongs because as we all know, we're on Duwamish Mokoshi native land. Salmon Welcoming was created by Malkoshut Duwamish artist Catherine Arquette Turpin. It's delightful to look at and gets even more interesting once you understand all the symbolism. The four salmon on the front of the mural represent the four seasons of the year, winter, spring, summer, and autumn. The two salmon on the back represent the earth and the sky. The six salmon in total on the mural represent the six directions that the Coast Salish people give thanks. The hands on the mural represent individual members of the community. Salmon Welcoming is located in the heart of the Lake City community, right where it belongs. These images remind us to acknowledge that our location is on traditional Coast Salish lands and waters. The mural also reminds us that it's all about the community. We need to take care of each other and we need to take care of the earth. This is our first mural that we did in 2016. Um, this was done by the teenagers of Lake City and all these images here were uh, images that the teenagers drew on paper and then my, my friend uh, Andy Miller was a local artist. He helped those images enlarged those images and drew the outlines so the teams came back and, and filled in uh, the same images that they, they created themselves. Uh, multiple images, uh, here's the arch on Lake City Way, 125th on Lake City Way. Uh, one of the teams was to make sure that the pride flag was there uh, to support our... And uh, this, this one's called We Are Lake City, it's the name of the and as we were painting this mural, Mr. Toyota, who owns uh, Toyota Sushi, he came running out after us. He's like, hey, 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 hey. He's like, do my wall next, do my wall next. So this was the third mural we did uh, for Mr. Toyota. Uh, this one's called Plastic Beach. Once again, these are all images that the teenagers drew on paper, and then Andy Miller helped them uh, enlarge them on the wall, and then they painted them. Uh, this is a mural to remind people to take care of the oceans. Uh, there's a plastic cup here. Uh, this represents the plastic we put into our oceans, which is causing a lot of problems for us. So we need to stop polluting our oceans with uh, plastic. So this has an environmental sustainability message. Because if we don't take care of the oceans, then there's no more sushi. So for Espanos de Salsa, it's a local uh, dance people. We can learn how to salsa dance and merengue and all those other amazing dances. Uh, Stephanie Morales drew several images of people dancing on the window and also drew, this was an area that used to get tagged with graffiti a lot. And there's the owner right there, Michael. And we're open for private lessons as of last week. Here we go. to 
about students from Literacy Source over there. Mm -hmm. And she got an idea of what cultures they're from and what their um, backgrounds are. So these flowers and patterns represent the many cultures of the students from uh, Literacy Source. So you have countries like China, Morocco, Kurdistan, Guatemala, Eritrea, and uh, Russia. done by Juan Angel Roman. Uh, he's an artist from Puerto Rico that now lives in Seattle. It's called Everyone Under the Same Brain. It's in English and Spanish. And what it means is that uh, we're all going through things together. We're all going through COVID together. Um, so we, we face similar things and we have to work together to solve them. Uh, you can see that little kid here is wearing a Lake City t-shirt here and um, Seahawks and a Nirvana t-shirt. And my favorite part is, is how he created this, this youth that's behind the umbrella. It's, it's amazing how he figured out how to do that with spray paint. Uh, Wall Full of Fishes created by Lynn DeBeal, local artist, is on the back of the fish store. Kids from Concordia School chose which fish to paint and helped Lynn paint the beautiful animals. Artist Stephanie Morales assisted DeBeal on this project. Sadly, Lynn DeBeal passed away in early 2020. She was a part of the Sound Generations program and loved attending the programs. Lynn will always be remembered by her warm spirit, her beautiful singing, and her inspiring art. Seattle, Washington. Seattle's food is a reflection of our glorious geography, a bounty of fresh local products from land and sea. In the Pacific Northwest, we celebrate our seasons and our chefs, our farmers, fishers, and foragers, and all that they bring to the table. Eat in Seattle and you'll learn why the Coast Salish tribes revered its seasonal symphony of salmon and shellfish, wild berries, and gathered greens. Generations of settlers and immigrants followed in their footsteps, foraging for mushrooms and cultivating specialty crops. A collaborative culture closely connects us as we strengthen the bonds of community around food. We invest in each other, in our neighborhood farmers markets, and our public pea patches. Chefs promote their favorite farmers and we promote our favorite chefs. Individuals and industries help the hungry and we help each other as tutors and gleaners. Technology and innovation are in Seattle's DNA. Creative companies offer ingenious ways to shop and cook. Our city's tastemakers use science and savvy to toy with technique, designing a new way to dine. Take a generous measure of indigenous ingredients picked from the farm and plucked from the sea. 
Stir vigorously in a pot large enough to accommodate a wide world of flavors. Now, turn up the heat with innovative ideas and make certain we're together to enjoy the bounty. This is Seattle Cuisine. Hey everybody, we're here at Washington Park Arboretum where the azaleas and the rhododendrons are in full splendor. Let's go take a walk.
blazing orange and reds and yellows. beautiful golden tree with the azaleas underneath is a golden English oak. Beautiful. I'm Annie Stalker. I have two dog yoga in Lake City, Seattle, and we offer chair yoga classes to the seniors who participate in sound generations at the Lake City Community Center on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So yoga is a pathway for us to connect with, learn about, and care for ourselves. So today we're gonna to be practicing chair yoga. So we're using the chair especially for those of us who have difficulty getting up and down from the floor, and also for those of us who have difficulty standing for any length of time, or those of us who have pain or instability when we stand. So the chair gives us a nice place to be stable as we move in our body, as we breathe, as we quiet our mind. So let's get started with our chair yoga. So the first thing I wanted to show you is that I'm sitting in a folded folding chair, and the reason for that is that it's firm behind me and underneath my push. So you want to try to find a chair in your house, maybe a kitchen chair or a dining room chair that has some firmness to it so that you can scoot yourself back in the chair and feel the support from behind and feel the support underneath your bottom. So once you do that, press your feet on the floor and feel how your whole foot is contacting the floor. Okay. So you should feel very well supported by the floor, the seat of the chair, and the back of the chair. Now, if you happen to be someone who's smaller, shorter, you might need to put something underneath your feet if your feet don't quite touch the floor. So an option for that would be to take a blanket underneath your feet or something that gives you some height underneath your feet so that you're not reaching for the floor with your feet. Okay, so I'm gonna put that blanket by the side there. So once you've found a comfortable seat that you can rest yourself back into, rest your hands on your thighs. We're going to close our eyes and start to pay attention. Start to listen. Start to notice as you inhale and exhale what it feels like to breathe in and what it feels like to breathe out. You may be noticing that your belly moves, that your chest moves, you may feel some movement in your shoulders as you breathe in, lifting, expanding. You might feel, as you exhale, a release, a relaxation, a dropping of those parts of your body. So go ahead and continue inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Keep breathing. See if you can narrow the opening of your mouth like you're whistling, so that there's a narrower opening and therefore the breath comes out more slowly as you exhale. Inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Let's do two more times of that inhaling through the nose and exhaling through your mouth. 
One more time, inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. And now go back to natural breathing. That might mean you close your mouth, might mean you breathe only through your mouth, might mean that your breath is a little staggered and stops. But let it be natural. You're not trying to do anything with it. And notice now the afterglow of the focused breathing practice. Inhale and exhale. Now take your hands together and rub them. And keep our eyes closed a little bit longer here. Rub your hands, rub your hands vigorously. Feel the warmth generating in your hands. And now take your palms to your eyes and let the soft circumference of your palm merge with the bony circumference of your eye socket. Tip your head down into your hands so that you're relaxing your neck some. And again, inhale through your nose. And exhale, huh. you can make some sound, maybe a sigh as you exhale. Two more times, inhale through your nose. And exhale, huh. relaxing, letting go of any of the things that you're holding in your heart, in your shoulders, in your belly. One more time, inhale. And exhale, huh. Now let your hands slide down your face, across your heart center and then down into your lap. And take a moment to feel the afterglow, what I like to call a melting moment after the focused effort. And very slowly, open your eyes and let your gaze be soft so that the colors and the shapes are soft around you. That's it, very good. Nice. And notice what it's like to open your eyes and feel and see and sense what's around you. That's it. Good. We're connecting. We're connecting with ourself. We're learning about ourself and our capacity to breathe. We're feeling a sense of community with our body, with our heart, with our mind. Good. So now let's slide the hands towards the knees. Reach towards your knees and let your back round. So at this point, your head's dropping down, your back is rounding, and your exhalation. And then inhale, slide your hands back and lift your heart. Do a little bit of a back bend. Good. Inhale and exhale, slide your hands forward, round your back, hollow your belly button back towards the chair. And inhale, slide your hands back and lift your chest. One more time, exhale, hands sliding forward towards your knees, rounding your back, and inhale, slide your hands back, lift your chest. Good. And then come back and relax into the chair. And notice how your spine feels now. Good, another one of those melting moments. All right. Let's take our left ear towards our left shoulder. So go as far as feels comfortable. You don't have to go any further than feels safe and comfortable for you as far as a side stretch for the side of your neck. That's it, now reach your right arm out to the side and feel that that increases the stretch. Inhale and exhale, and now turn your right palm face up. As you turn your right palm face up, you'll notice that your right elbow bends some. And I want you to do that because we're gonna imagine that we have something in our right hand. So if you had something in your right hand, you'd be using the muscles throughout your right arm and chest and belly to hold your arm out in this way. I like to imagine that I have a papaya in my hand. Not a bowling ball, not a balloon, something in between. For me, it's a papaya. Inhale and exhale. Turn your chin down now over your left chest. So now as you turn your chin down, you're feeling more of a stretch down from the base of the head down to the inside of your right shoulder blade. Inhale, and exhale. If you want to increase this stretch, you can take your left hand very lightly behind your head and add some weight. It doesn't take much pressure to increase the stretch there. Inhale, and exhale. One more time, inhale and exhale. Take your left hand now into your lap, 
in the middle, resting on your thighs. And with your next inhalation, lift your head and your right arm back to the center. So your right hand is directly above your left hand, kind of like periscope mirrors, right above the other. Good, inhale and exhale. And now slowly, with soft eyes, bring your right hand down to meet your left hand. This is a little bit of what's called Qigong. So it's kind of a quiet, focused, gentle movement. Good. And then rest your hands in your lap and relax. Inhale and exhale. Good. And take your right ear towards your right shoulder. Ah, oh, this feels different. This is a different side for me. Walk your left hand out through the air. Feel the beginning of the stretch along the side of your neck, down the arm, maybe into your forearm. Inhale and exhale, turn your left palm face up and bend your elbow just a little bit. And imagine whatever you've decided to imagine in your hand so that you can feel the muscles of your arm, your side body, even your belly bracing, engaging to hold your arm in this position. Good, inhale and exhale. And now turn your chin down over your right chest with a change in the sensation in the back of your neck. So let your head drop down, inhale and exhale. Again, if you'd like more stretch, remember it doesn't take much Take your right hand behind your head very lightly to draw your chin down. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And take your right hand down into your lap, palm face up. And with your next inhalation, bring your left arm up slowly. Bring it back in like a flower petal, curling back in. And now one hand is above the other, spine is tall, heart is lifting, very nice. Now bring your left hand slowly down towards your right hand. Very slow movement down all the way. Eyes are soft. Good. That's it. And rest your hands in your lap. And have one of those melting moments now, just feeling the echo of the effort that you just made. Good, now we'll bring both arms out to the sides. And I wanna point out here that if you have a shoulder injury, if you have recent shoulder surgery, you can keep your arms in quite close here. Bringing the arm in close will allow you to have more support for any sensitivity or pain that you have in your shoulder. If you're able to bring your arms out to the sides a little bit wider, that's it. So again, we're imagining that we have some weight in our hands, spreading the fingers, making the hands curve like bowls out holding whatever it is that you're holding. Inhale and exhale. Let your arms be slightly forward of your chest because when we bring our arms back like this, you can feel, if you try it, that your neck muscles will start kicking in and engaging too much. So bringing the arms forward helps the shoulder blades melt down, helps the heart lift, and helps you engage more of the front body muscles. Very good. Inhale. And then exhale, let's hug ourselves, bring right arm on top of left. Again, if it feels like too much here, you can hold here. If you're able to hold here, you can give yourself a good pat on the back for making it to yoga class today. And this kind of patting on your shoulder and down your side ribs into your lungs, gets the blood moving, gets everything stimulated. So nice big pat on the back, that's it. Once you've done that on both sides, give yourself a good hug. And then once again, round your back. Curl your spine down. I like to call this conscious slouching. So sometimes it's okay to slouch. Inhale and exhale and feel the stretch between your shoulder blades. Inhale and exhale. Bring your elbows and your head a little bit over to your left. It's a twist to your left. Head, elbows, shoulders drawing over to the left. Inhale and exhale. And now inhale, come back to the center. Exhale in the middle, still slouching, letting your head drop down. Inhale, and exhale over to your right. Twist to your right. Mm, I can feel it's just a little more tight for me to turn to the right. Inhale, and exhale. And inhale, come back to the center. 
Push your feet into the floor. Feel that firm foundation through your feet. Draw your belly button back to the back of the chair and now unfold your spine against the chair back as you unfold your arms back into the bowl or the flower opening up. Or if you have injury in your shoulder, keep your elbows in close. Inhale and exhale. Imagine you have those weights in your arms. Lift your heart. Lift up through the top of your head. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Second side, so the other arm on top. Left arm on top of the right. Hug however feels comfortable. If you can give yourself a good squeeze, go ahead and do that. Maybe imagine someone near and dear giving you a hug. We haven't had enough hugs lately, I know. So hug yourself and then give yourself a good pat on the back and make it to yoga. Firm pat on those lungs. Good to help our lungs get stimulated. And then go into your conscious slouching. Round your back, drop your chin down. Press your feet into the floor. Inhale and exhale. Draw your belly button back to the back of the chair. Inhale and exhale. And now turn your shoulders, your elbow, your head to your left. A little twist. Inhale and exhale, feeling the extra stretch likely around your shoulder blade, on the right side of your neck. Inhale back to the center. Exhale. Ooh. And then inhale over to your right. Twist, turn of your head. Maybe you go a little further if you want more stretch for your neck, your shoulders. Inhale and exhale. And then inhale back to the center. Good. Unfold your spine, press down through your feet, belly button back into the chair. Unfold your arms, maybe a little bit wider this time. Maybe your heart can lift even more. Maybe your gaze can look up above horizon level. Inhale, and then exhale, palms together, and all the way back to the center. Okay. And release your hands down. Ah, melting moment, another time when you can let your body relax. Listen, feel what's there, warm, easing muscles. Okay, so again, we're going to plant our feet, keep the knees facing over the toes. We're going to push down through our hands, so we're pushing down through the hands to lift your heart. And lean back against the chair to get that little bit of lift of your chest. Inhale and exhale. Now turn to your right. Right hand comes to the side of the chair. Maybe you have an armrest on your chair. You can put your hand there. And your left hand comes onto the inside of your left knee. But you don't want to move your left knee, because if you push there and let the knee go out, you're not going to get any help from your left arm. So keep your, right, your left leg very stable. As you inhale, grow tall. And exhale, gently turn to your right. Turning belly, turning chest, and then turning your head to look over your right shoulder. Inhale, go tall, and exhale, gently turn your head to the right. The last part of the short turn, you can tip your head down just a little bit on the right. But be aware that you're not bringing your shoulder blade up to your ear. Right shoulder blade is going down as you look over your right shoulder. Left leg is stable. Inhale, and exhale. And now slowly turn your head to look over your left shoulder. Just your head looking over your left shoulder now. Inhale and exhale. And now the left ear tips down slightly as you turn your gaze to look over your left shoulder. Inhale and exhale. Good. And then release back to the center. Ooh, that's a good melting moment. Everything got a little bit wrung out. So quiet. Easeful, relaxed breath now. Okay. We have two sides. So you might either feel kind of excited that we have a second side, or you might be, darn, I have to do another one. But if you go out just doing one side, you'll be leaning like this. You'll be in balance. So we got to do the second side. So plant your feet, firm your legs, grow tall, feel the chair behind you as you gently turn to your left, through your belly, through your ribs, through your chest. Take your right hand on the inside of the right knee, left hand on the arm chair, or onto your seat here. Inhale, look tall. And exhale, gently turn to your left. 
Inhale, grow tall and gently turn to your left. Left ear now tipping down at the very, very last part of the twist in your spine. And your gaze turn off in the distance over your left shoulder. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Slowly turn your head now to look over your right shoulder. Very slowly. Ooh, that feels a little tighter on me. Lift up through the top of the head. Turn to look over the right shoulder and let the right ear drop down somehow. Soft jaw, soft eyes. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale and slowly release. Good. Another melting moment. Okay. Good. Relaxing into the chair now, feeling how maybe you're warmer in your back. Maybe you're warmer in your shoulders. Yeah, good. Okay, so let's take our hands together, bringing the hands together palm to palm, finger to finger. We're going to open up our palms like it's a book, like we're opening a book. Okay, so open up your hands like you're reading a book, and then turn the hands even more so the backs of the hands come to touch. My fingers are pointing towards my throat right now. This is a big stretch on the wrist here and can be very helpful if you have issues with your hands, especially if you've been on a keyboard or you've maybe been in the garden clipping. So you can get a good stretch through the wrist here. Carry on moving your fingers down. So you're turning your fingers down, keeping the backs of the hands together. Reach the fingers forward and round your back and reach out forward and drop your head down. Inhale and exhale. Bring your hands over to your right, back to the center and over to the left. And back to the center. Good. And then inhale, bring your hands back. Try to keep your shoulder blades down your back as you bring the hands with the fingers pointed down. And then swing the fingers up and around and now down. Notice how my elbows are at the same height as my wrists. So they're not down here, they're up here. This will give that same stretch on that side of the wrist now. I'll do it one more time. Notice my elbows are up, but my shoulders aren't towards my ears. So my shoulders are down, but my elbows are up. That's it. Good. Inhale, open your palms. Elbows do come down at this point, like you're looking at a book. Take the backs of the hands together. Back of the wrist stretch. Take your fingers down. Notice my elbows just came up. Reach forward, and now as you reach forward, draw your belly button back, drop your chin down, and now let's take the hands over to the left, twist over to the left, back to the center, and now over to the right, and back to the center, and inhale, bring the hands back in a little quicker this time, back to the center, palms together, and down, good. Now inhale, bring your palms apart, come onto your fingertips, it's like you're lifting your wings. And exhale, fingers and palms together as the elbows come down. Inhale, palms and fingers apart, come into your fingertips. And exhale, back down. And pause there for a moment because I want to add a part of working with our mouth that I talked about earlier. So we're going to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth, but I'd like you to keep a narrow shape for your mouth, like you're whistling, so that when you exhale, your breath is nice and slow. So it goes like this, inhale through the nose and exhale. Long exhalation. Good, so let's add the breath to the movement of the arms. Inhale, hands apart, lift the elbows. Exhale. Two more times, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Good. Release your hands down into your lap. Another one of those melting moments. And in fact, we can shake our arm out like this, and then the other arm out like this. This is a little bit of lymph movement for uh, the body to help the lymph move. And then raise your right arm up and take your left fingertips and tap up and down your arm. This is not necessarily yoga again, but it's a way to get 
uh, the vessels, especially the lymph in our immune system vessels going. And then all the way across the collarbone and into the sternum bone. Good. And then notice the difference between the two sides. And let's do the other side. Shaking the arm out and then lifting it up. And take your right hand and tap with your fingertips. So my fingernails, I can feel them a little bit. And that's OK. That's OK to feel the fingernails a little bit on your skin. That's stimulating. Wakes up the tissue and the vessels, gets the lymph moving in the body. That's it. And then come across the collarbones, good area for lymph again, and into the sternum. Good. And then rest your hands down on your legs. And again, one of those melting moments. Very good. Inhale and exhale. Okay. Now let's close our eyes. Close your eyes for a moment and feel what you're noticing in your body right now. Notice your back against the chair. Notice the feeling of your arms and your belly. Inhale and exhale. Okay. And gently open your eyes. One more exercise before we do relaxation. So we haven't done a lot with the legs today, but I thought we'd do some with the pelvic movement. So we're going to do this rocking movement in the chair where you shift over to your left side or over to your right side and you feel the body weight more down on the right side and then lean over to your left side and feel the body weight over on the left cheek. Back to the center and over to the right side and back to the center and to your left side. You can make your movement smaller if you'd like or you could make it a little larger. You could lean a little further if you feel safe like you're not going to fall off your chair. Come back to the center and over to the right. Again, you can make it just a small movement. And the next time you come over to your right, lift your left heel. And when you come back to the center, drop the heel and the hands. Back to the, to the left side now, lifting your right heel. And then back to the center and let the heel come back down. Again, over to your right, lift the left heel. Drop the left heel back to the center. And now over to your left and drop the right heel. Good. Now we'll come back into our chair. We did just a little bit of work with our legs and our feet. That, in fact, again, is another pumping of our lymph system when we lift the heel and drop it quickly. So it allows us to get things moving in our body. Good. But now it's time for relaxation. So I'd like you to, again, scoot back into your chair and feel the contact of the chair behind you. Let your hands rest on your thighs. Revisit the feeling of your feet on the floor. And close your eyes. Relax your jaw. And underneath your eyelids, so with your eyelids covering your eyes, turn your gaze with your eyes closed. Imagine that you're looking down towards your knees. So you don't have to tip your head down. You're just underneath your eyelids, turning your gaze down towards your knees. That's it. That automatically relaxes the brain. And then with your jaw relaxed, you might find that your teeth are slightly parted. Your lips are slightly parted. And feel your hands resting on your thighs. And now inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth three times. Just to circle back to what we did at the beginning of the class. Inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. One more time, inhale through your nose, and exhale through your mouth. And now close your mouth and relax your breath. As we relax here, we're going to go into a moment of silence. And see if you can stay with you know, the felt sense of what's going on in your body as far as warmth, Relaxation, perhaps a quieter mind, a more settled mind.
take a deeper breath through your nose. Very slowly and gently open your eyes. Let there be a little twinkle behind your eyes. You can almost smile. And then inhale, bring your arms out, palms face up. And exhale, bring your palms together. Namaste. The light in me bows to the light in you. Thank you for joining me today. It's so good to see you. Thank you.